Welcome back to another Spill the Beans podcast. My name is Lester. Yes, and this is Paolo Street. Uh, Lester, uh, yes. I just like to commend your energy. Every day, yes. it gets a little lower. Talaga ba? Oh no! But, but, but uh, no, no, just kidding aside, it's, it's starting to improve. Yeah. Okay, so today we have a very special guest. Yes. Someone uh, whom we've worked with. Uh, yes. Uh, in, in, I, I'm not sure what year was that. So I'm not going to try to remember, but just like <laughs> Chef, just like Chef Carlo, uh, the, uh, this is one of the people that uh, has collaborated with uh, Teddy Sage. Yes. So today uh, we have, uh, I'm not sure, is this going to be career talk or YouTube talk? So uh, how do you want to start it? I so uh, up close and personal. Ay, oh, nga pala. Mm. Up close. Thank you for being yes. on point, Lester. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So today we'll start off up close and personal. Okay, sige. So we're going to get up close and personal with the creative director of Make Believe Productions. Yes. So here is Leslie Leveriza. Mm -hmm. Lina. Uh, Leslie, can you just say hi? Hi. yourself to uh, the camera mm -mm. Uh, and then just say your name and then uh, your profession. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for that introduction. So, yes, I am Leslie Leveriza Lina, triple L. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. me. Um, yes, I'm creative director of Make Believe Productions. And on the side, I'm also a host. So, I host live events. I also host on O Shopping. So, I'm a vendor on TV mm -hmm. as well. And I am an independent film and theater actress. Okay. And a proud mom and wife. Galing. Uwi na tayo, Lester. Hindi <laughs> 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 tayo pwede. Grabe. Hindi <laughs> tayo bagay dito. Ha? I, Leslie, you're such a professional when it comes you. to... You're saying you're a theater practitioner. Mm. Can you define that for our subscribers and memory keepers? What's a theater practitioner? Ah, hi there, um, subscribers and memory keepers. Well, yeah. for a theater practitioner, it's somebody that's involved in any aspect of theater. So okay. you could be backstage, you could be a director, a playwright, you could be a stage manager, or a performer on stage. Or a performer. Yes. So how did you start? Uh, your, ano yung core competence mo? It's more of a performer. Yes. Okay. I really fell in love with acting. Mm -hmm. I was very, very young. Actually, Paolo, if you had told me like today or many yes. years ago rather that I would one day end up as a performer, I wouldn't have believed it. Because I was painfully shy. Wow. As a kid. Really? Sobra, sobra. So we lived in the US and um, my teacher couldn't call on me without me crying. I had a cinematic tear that yeah. would, you know, yeah. fall down no, my cheek. And no, no sound, just tears. Yeah, okay. just tears. I really uh -uh. didn't want to talk in school. Um, and my my teacher even like had this special meeting with my parents asking, does she even understand English? You know, because she really doesn't want to talk in class. Yeah. And my parents said, you know, that's the only language she knows. She just knows a sprinkling of Filipino. She yeah. grew up um, here in the U.S. And so I really was painfully shy. But then I think around grade four, grade five, um, I think this was during the time that, that Leia was starting to appear in mm -hmm. Miss Saigon. Mm -hmm. And at the start of the year, we had already come home to the Philippines. At the start of the year, we had a teacher. Well, the teachers um, introduce clubs and they sort of like have this open sign up for everybody. Okay. So the one in charge of drama club said, so who here would want to be just like Leia Salonga? And without thinking, you know, something just really clicked within me it's like light bulb moment then yeah. you know without even thinking I just raised my hand wow. and I signed up for drama club but when I got home and I yeah. told my parents so I, I signed up for drama club they were like oh, <laughs> really you you're the shyest girl you know you don't even want to talk in class yeah but yeah but I think initially for me it was it was also because I wanted to escape myself I was so uncomfortable and really insecure yeah. and so I welcomed the idea of becoming someone else but my first stage play actually I wasn't someone else I was another animal so I was a bunny you're a bunny okay <laughs> yeah and then but what was happening was as I started uh, performing in school plays rather than me escaping myself I sort of started becoming more comfortable with myself and I was growing more and more confident and yeah be, just being more comfortable with who I am okay so the Leia Salonga uh, what, 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 what was the play or what was because uh, all I know is Miss Saigon when yeah. you talk about so yeah I, I 
watched the documentary of her coming out in Miss Saigon. Okay. So when I was watching that, I'm like, wow, it looks like a lot of fun being on stage. So it, I, that documentary like charted her journey from like the auditions and uh, then I think I, I, yeah, and yeah. then rehearsing for the play and then finally you know the play premiering, and it just seemed like such a fascinating world. Okay. To be in. So from someone who's painfully shy, mm. uh, what made you come out of your shell was that whole Miss Saigon production. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, nothing specific about it. It's just in general. When you saw it, you, you it's like how boys see Michael Jordan. Uh, when we see him, we just, so something similar. Mm. You can do the same for us since we're also painfully oh, shy. Really? Oh, baka we can. Uh, Mama, yeah. When uh, when we warm up some more, and then uh, when Lester's not hiding behind this monitor, mm. baka we can do some exercises. Some theater exercises. Yes. Sure. Oh, but not me, yeah. Dekil ang kasama ka. Because uh, okay. they say, you know, theater, it's like a team effort. It really is fun if, uh, you know, more than one or two people are involved. So okay. You but have to join. I'll, I'll try to join. <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo mga Filipino, yung mga reply, I'll try. Oh, no? okay. Tapos hindi na tutuloy. Hindi na pupunta. Yun ang, mm. uh, yun ang I guess, uh, a gentle no or declining, I'll try. But Leslie, so... Mm. As, uh, when when you were saying that that when you saw Miss Saigon, this is the thing that really uh, made you come out of your shell. Was mm. it continuous? Once once you saw it, it was just one play after another, or one school activity after mm. another, or were there times that you also regressed and say, yeah, yeah. well. I, so I signed up for the drama club and my first role was as a bunny and there were like a lot of struggles like mm-hmm. I remember coming out I wanted to be a daffodil okay. or a rose because okay. there were also like it, the, the scene was in the forest and it goes into there are animals in the forest yeah. so I really was hoping for daffodil or rose but I didn't get daffodil or rose I got a bouncy bunny <laughs> and there, there okay. was a there was a part of the dance and we had to like turn around and shake our butts and I found it so <laughs> so humiliating and we had like this tail that was attached to our white jumpsuit okay and i just found it really embarrassing so i tore the tail off yeah but then i didn't re- but hindi ko naisip na oh nga, if i tear the tail off it's going to leave a hole yes. <laughs> in my in my jogging pants so, so i'm like uh oh so anyway i tried to attach it again like had glue was too shy because i was painfully yeah. shy too shy to approach the teacher and ask if she could fix it so you know just trying to fix it all on my own like as a grade 5 student like yeah. what did i know about yeah, but, but when you pulled it, it was in mid-production. Where you was there a show or you yeah? Just, okay. It was yeah. There was a show. I think like right before we came on stage, I was like talking. This is so humiliating. Yeah. So I did have like those moments where I'd regress mm. or um, and of course we'd have like audition uh, the audition process to be cast in a particular play. There are times where I didn't feel like I did well or wouldn't get in cast in a particular production. So mm. it wasn't smooth sailing all the way. It was all. Also getting more acquainted with what the craft required and what was part of a play production. So auditions, not getting cast or not getting the role that you wanted and Mm -hmm. just being able to also be confident through that and mm-hmm. not let go of your dream just because things don't go the way that you expect. Wow, I like yeah. that. Uh, but we should, yeah. uh, Life lessons did it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, when uh, rejections came, or I'm, I'm sure uh, when you're in uh, performing arts or when you're an actress, uh, you guys, just like in real estate with Lee J, mm. you guys have a lot of uh, rejections. Mm. So what's the impetus? What's the momentum? That, or or what's, uh, what do you fall back on? That tells you, oh, okay, all right. So this is like my fourth rejection for the month. Uh, mm. Maybe I should keep on trying. What makes you keep going? Yeah, I guess it's putting things in perspective. Like it really is part of it. And also seeing an addition just because you didn't get in that specific project. You know, being able to see it as a learning experience. Like what did I do well that I want to keep on doing? What did I not do so well mm-hmm. that, that I can improve on for the next audition? And I've always seen auditions, you know, it has happened to me that I didn't get the part. Okay. But the producer or the director heard my voice and they liked it. So they got me as a voice talent for 
different project. Uh, or, you know, you're waiting in line and you get to talk to somebody there and then they find out more about what you do and they're like, oh, yeah. you know, I'm gonna call you for, for a certain role. Or, uh -oh. you know, like the friends you make, actually, then you they become important uh, contacts. That's true. As well. So, I, true. I, it's never sayang, you know, really getting out of your bed. Because means it's like that. Do I go to this audition? You know, I might not be able to get in. The yeah. tamaditis factor <laughs> sets in. But all, always, you know, remembering that it, it's a learning experience. And yeah, I'm always so glad that for auditions that I push myself to go to, okay. I always end up like learning something, picking up something, or making an important acquaintance. Okay, so technically, it's putting things in perspective. Mm -hmm. And... You just won't get a yes or you're hired all the time. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, especially now at this day and age where everything is instant gratification mm. on Facebook, if you don't get a like, you don't get a share, kids now do get uh, depressed over That's social true. media. That's very so, true. So uh, for... for do I say us? Do, but for me, uh, the, the old school way is really to grind it out. Mm -hmm. Uh what I was taught when I was younger, an, uh, a no will eventually lead you to a yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one rejection will eventually open the door. So you were saying, mm -hmm. but how do we? Uh, how do you impart that? Because you're also a mother. Yes. Yes. How, how do you impart that old school tenet of you just have to keep trying? You have to keep trying. How do you impart that to the younger ones? Because our subscribers are Gen Z and uh, and younger millennials. Mm -hmm. how, how would you impart that 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 wisdom that you just have to keep trying? Every door that's closed, eventually will open. Mm -hmm. What's what's the best way to tell young ones? I'm, I'm asking advice for you because I also <laughs> employ. <laughs> I also employ the young ones. Yeah. Uh, what's the best way to, to go about it? Mm -mm. I guess it's really putting it in perspective and realizing that in this day and age of instant mm -hmm. gratification, you can't do away with, with process. Mm -hmm. You can't do yeah. away with That's your learning curve. Um, like for my daughter, for example, she just recently told me that, Mom, I think I know what to do. She's 13, by the way. Wow. Uh, she recently told me, like, what's that? And she says, I want to be a performing artist. So I was like, oh, oh just no! like mommy. <laughs> oh. And of course, I can't tell her like be practical or it's very hard. I mean, I, I do like paint a realistic picture, but I really need to support her as well because mm. yeah because that was that was the exact same path that I wanted but like right now she's taking a workshop and she also shared with me like her audition process and it was difficult and she was so nervous and so you know just I told her you know this is like the first uh, workshop that you're taking outside of uh, a make-believe workshop because she attended with with us for a long time I saw that on Manzilla yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she does go to the to the make-believe yeah. production so yeah okay. she, uh, she started i think she started attending workshops with us like she was two and a half okay years old like uh, uh, until like eight or ten but now now that she's older you know we're making her take workshops outside and she's like yeah mom it's awkward if you're my teacher uh, so yeah just teaching her like okay so you didn't do so you felt like you didn't do so well in in the audition so what what have you learned from it and then i told her you know you just have to keep on like attending workshops and learning so it's just realizing that yeah it's a process like whatever it is that you're passionate in be it art or uh, be it photography or editing you can expect to get to it and be good right away um they say that one of the things that we do um especially like for us like uh, artists like there's an immediate output you can't expect like your first foray into it you're gonna be good um you have to realize that it goes into a process of you working hard like for theater for example uh, the audience sees it at the end of a sees a show at the end of a long and tedious rehearsal process it's like two to three months wow. of preparation and what you're seeing is you know so, like the toward the latter part of a journey that started, you know, a couple of months prior, mm -hmm. and my own experience as an actress and is coming into a role. You know, I've really struggled with trying to get a character. Okay. I feel like there, I've come into rehearsals really feeling like I sucked, like downright mm -hmm. sucked. But then knowing that it's a rehearsal and that's yeah. what rehearsals are for, that you've got to work it all out and try to work out the kinks. You can't come into rehearsal thinking that it's going to be perfect, that yeah. I'm going to say my lines, that I'm going to get into character. But you have to trust also that throughout the process and trusting your director, trusting your co-actors, that 
that you're gonna find it. Yeah. But then, of course, doing your due diligence. So, like, outside of rehearsals, making sure that I study my lines, that I study my character, if okay. I need to change my shoes or what I'm wearing during rehearsal so that I get into it. Mm -hmm. Of course, you've got to do the work. Um, but you also have to trust the process that you're going to get there. You shouldn't, you know, feel like you need to fast forward or just because you're not good right away, um, you're going to abandon. Because yeah. a lot of people do that. They, they're they passionate in the beginning. They, like, super get into it. But then when it doesn't go their way, then, oh, that's not for me. That's true. Yeah, but you really have to, you know, go through the process and go through that journey of being bad, maybe sucking um, in the beginning, but then really working hard to get better. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, as you were saying, a lot of, uh, I'm not sure if it's just Filipinos, but mm. a lot of people, they, I, we call it in Filipino, parang no? Yes, that exactly. We're, we're, we're very, uh, very uh, hardworking in the beginning, but mm. eventually we just taper off and, and give up. Uh, I like that. It's a simple word. As you were saying, you have to trust that there's a process. Yes. Trust your journey. Trust your journey. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So there's a process. And, and one more thing that I, I got from you was you have to do your due diligence. Yes. I never heard due diligence till I was a lot older. <laughs> uh, but eventually, uh, I, I think I called it by another name. But you're right. You have to do your due diligence. You have to know how to play your part. Exactly. Right? I, I'm not a big fan of uh, Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> I'm imagine going to leave comments. Sorry, but I'm not a big fan. But uh, there's this one thing about his group that they always say, uh, play your part. Mm -hmm. uh, trust and, and also sorry for so many uh, sports reference but <laughs> oh, <yeah. clears throat> Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan. Basketball. I know. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the male perspective into the, to sure, the podcast. Sure, sure. Uh, there's, there's a player now uh, from Philadelphia 76ers. Mm -hmm. uh, his nickname or his moniker is uh, Trust the Process. Mm -hmm. So for the kids, at least they can somewhat see it that not everything will just immediately come to you. Exactly. Because the process lang ngayon is uh, making a profile on Facebook profile on Instagram and then eventually you feel like everyone's going to like you. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now you're saying you, there is a process and you have to trust that process but also at the same time do your work. Do exactly. your due, due diligence. Yes. Okay, so what's the process if you want to be an actress or in the performing arts? Uh -huh. What's the process Jan? Yeah, well, for those that are still in school, I really mm -hmm. would recommend like signing up for a drama club, getting into production, um, because yeah, that, that's how I first got into it. And you know, you you'll be surprised. Like those of you that that started out in drama club, you know, you do end up encountering these people mm -hmm. later down the line, and you'll realize that oh, you you pursued it too, or maybe in a different, uh, maybe not exactly theater, but yeah. also in media, also in entertainment. So yeah. there is that, but. But, you know, just, you know, experiencing a school production wherein you go through the process of additions and you go into a rehearsal a process. And then also a lot of times in school productions, mm -hmm. you don't just perform, but you're actually, you help make the props, you help make the set, you help sell tickets, you know, uh -huh. you make the posters. Uh -oh. So just that all around uh, immersion so that you can appreciate all of the different um, components to it is also very important. That's true, multitasking. But a startup business. Lang. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, because you know, Lester, in a startup, there are a lot of things to do. They said, once you leave uh, a startup company and go to a bigger company, most of the time, you end up overqualified. Yes, can you man? I'm taking a yes so I can move on to my next point. Yes, yes, tama, de ba? Sabi ko ganon ba yun? Ganon ba yun? Para hindi mo na experience. But Leslie, uh, so you're saying that you have to go through uh, school productions first uh, or a drama a drama club, uh, and then there you also learn how to multitask. Mm -hmm. What's the next step after you? Let's say you do school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, what what happened to me was so I was doing school productions uh -oh. and then also signing up for workshops during the summer so mm -hmm. those uh, during summer that, that would be an opportunity for you because uh, big theater groups also offer workshops and yeah. that's a way for directors to see uh, you um, what happened to me also was that as I was doing workshops you know somebody would approach me and say you know you should try an audition for and when I was in high school also I was pretty lucky because my high school during the time I was there I heard that they don't do it anymore but they set aside a performing arts section okay. where it 
in now uh, instead of taking PE like if you were in the theater strand you would be taking acting classes if you're okay. in the choral you'd be taking voice lessons if you're in band you'd you know have yeah. somebody come and teach you music and so we had that and also because um, because we were in the performing arts section like we we would have irregular schedules in that we were always performing for mm-hmm. school programs or we would be out of the school representing the school in different events and so they would give us you know makeup tests and all of that and allow us to make up for the time that we'd be away from school time from from formal school time so I was really lucky and during the time there were some practitioners yeah. coming in and um, handling our classes and there was some that really, really come up to me it was so heartening to hear that you know as a high school student with a big dream and you don't know like how do I get there um, but some like approached me and said you know uh, when the time comes or maybe you should start exploring you know professional opportunities you know keep your eye out for auditions maybe yeah. you could try it and go so you know just hearing that you know was validation for me and it kept the fire uh, burning kept the flame burning and when I got into college also doing like a school productions here and there and when I graduated yeah then I said okay I'm just gonna go for it you know yeah. um, if it doesn't work out then maybe I would go for a desk job but maybe for the first year after my graduation I'm just gonna go for it and okay. see where it takes me so yeah so I just poured over the newspaper wala pa masyadin mga Facebook wala, uh, wala pa. pa actually wala, wala pa during that time yeah. Because now there are like a lot of Facebook groups, auditions, and casting calls. Yes. So for you guys, actually, if you wanted to explore those opportunities, you can just you know type in on Facebook audition casting calls in ah, the Philippines. Ma- oh, yeah, ma- ma- <laughs> yeah, Lester. You know, uh, they, they yeah, have requirements for mga dancers. Yeah. Yeah, Paolo, okay. yung mga mukhang uh, <laughs> <laughs> mapuputing na dyan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Leslie, uh, I like that. So technically what you're saying is be proactive. Yes, uh, yes. Be, be very proactive. Mm-hmm. But for, are there a lot of summer, uh, what do you call it, workshops? Yeah. Ba? For, even for the younger ones? Yes, for the younger ones. So my group actually, we have uh, Make Believe Productions. We do have uh, theater workshops as well. We even have during the off season. Mm-hmm. We really specialized young kids so like uh, three years old three to about nine or ten year okay. old for teenagers you know you have trumpets you have repertory Philippines okay. my daughter has joined both actually trumpets and rep right now she's taking a rep workshop mm-hmm. um, and there are actually also a lot of different independent groups oh you also have PETA um, which uh, shows uh, creative musical theater theater acting as well and they take you through the process of creating a play not just acting okay. in a play so there are like a lot of different groups actually that offer theater okay. workshops. I, I'm sorry, but I have to put you on the spot. I I, sure. I really don't watch a lot of theater, very few and far between. Mm-mm. But how come I always see the same actors, the same group most of the time? Uh, is it uh, is it still <laughs> a thriving community, or yes. is or, or does the role just circulate uh, uh, amongst an, a certain number of people? Mm-hmm. Because I, I'm. I remember I wanted to watch. I won't uh, name the, the the title of the play. I wanted to you watch. Can tell a, me offline. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to watch a play, and then I said, ah, "Okay, so that's the actor from the last play I watched." Mm. And then there was a third play I wanted to watch. Like, wow, it's the same guy again. So how's how's the status of the the theater community now mm-hmm. in the Philippines? Because I'm I'm just wondering, uh, since I have a daughter, and what if she chose this path, th- yeah. this kind of path? Uh, if she goes through summer uh, su- summer workshops, uh, she really works hard in school. Is it best to send her abroad, or if mm-hmm. she wants to pursue theater here, is there a a path, a direction for her? Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say like for those that go to like the summer workshops, yeah. the teachers there uh, are professional they either work as performers or as directors okay. and they could spot you there and then you know if you come in and audition for them in the future like after having graduated from from college and then yeah. they, oh you're, you're my student and I know what you can do so you have sort of that foot in the door already which uh-huh. helps and also for a lot of college theater organizations mm-hmm. also the the 
heads and a lot of the directors also are in the professional theater scene anyway so if they see you and what you can do within the uh, college or school context then when you go outside and audition mm -hmm. again that would be another way of the foot in the door and that you don't come in cold you're not a complete stranger they know what you can do yeah um with that i do get what you mean in terms of like you see a lot of the same faces yep. um these are people that have really pursued it and have fought for it actually uh, because okay. as, a, as a it's not easy it's not easy and uh the the state of it here in in the philippines is that you can one cannot live on theater alone <laughs> but then yeah. you would have to do like a lot of other things like on the side yes. or some even have like maybe jobs flexible jobs as programmers or uh, and then they're able to do theater in the evening okay um, there are some that have full-time jobs and then from their full-time job they run to a rehearsal at night so it's really different ways of making it work and different ways of making room for that passion like me for example I'm not just a theater actress I have make-believe mm -hmm. productions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do oh shopping I also host events on the side so mm -hmm. it really is something that you fight for and make space for and okay. The, the people that you see um, these are people that I extremely look up to because they've really fought for it and they've really you know put in the work to make sure that they're able to do it on a regular basis okay. but with that said I wouldn't say that it's impossible for like a new person to get in because yeah. I, I feel like just the feeling of like being somebody who was like in in the circle that wasn't my story i mm -hmm. mean i'd taken like a, a workshop or two i've i had encountered like a professional or two that told me to go for it but a lot of the people that i auditioned for in the beginning never heard of me okay and it would it had come to a point also like a director said how come i've never seen you anywhere where did yeah. you come from and uh, even when there was a time when i took a break from theater acting you know to focus on make believe to focus on mommying to focus on matters of content consequence yeah. and adulting yeah. and so it had been several years and then I came into audition and the director was like how come I've never seen you before uh, he he commended my audition he said that was a very good audition and he's like how come I haven't seen you in any show so I told him you know I've taken a break it's been quite a while um, but I would love to come back and I was cast and I was cast in the lead role uh, of that wow. show and there were friends of his that, had, that he had invited to audition and so it's not impossible I think then your due diligence and your work comes in like preparing well for your audition yeah. um, making sure that you know you come in and mm -hmm. you just show everything that you're gonna do um, yeah so it, it's not impossible but I think that getting into like workshops is good so that you sort of you will meet people in the industry okay. but then also keeping your eye out going through Facebook for auditions that you could possibly send to it's actually planting a lot of seeds yes. and then it, yes. it, it's just like sales it's a numbers game yep. like you send yep. to as many as you can um, hoping that maybe if I send out 20 that maybe one or two will bear fruit yeah. and then, then you'd be cast in a project so it's not impossible it's, it's being very proactive it's training let's say if you're in between projects also like I make sure that I'm still able to attend classes mm -hmm. uh, take uh, yeah uh, acting workshops, uh, mask workshops, voice workshops, just to make sure that I'm still yeah. sharp. Yep. Making sure that I watch also so that I can uh, see the you also work watch. Oh, yeah. that's being done. I learn so much from, yeah. from watching um, people act on stage. And yeah, just coming in and giving a great, memorable, kick-ass audition. Kick-ass. <laughs> how, how long was your hiatus? You were saying that uh, there was a time that you took a break. Yeah, it took several actually. Actually, I just came from a break. Um, yeah. So right now, I'm part of a festival called the Virgin Lab Fest that's running Virgin in Lab Fest. Uh, CCP mm -hmm. um, okay. under Writer's Block and Tanghalang Pilipino. Basically, what it does is that it stages untested, untried plays for the first time. So it's all original work by Filipino playwrights. And so it's sort of like, if you know Cinemalaya, which is the independent film yes. scene, this is like yep. the independent theater yeah. scene. And it's been around for 15 years already. So this is its 15th year. And mm -hmm. apparently it has like a cult following, like people really come in to watch to see the fresh work and to yeah. see um, these new creations. It's very exciting. So it... it when I auditioned for it a couple of months ago, I realized, wow, it's been four years since I've acted in a theater play. Be four years? Yeah. Wow. Because I've been busy with work for Make Believe. I've been still been able to do like acting projects, like short films, mm -hmm. you know, appear, have a cameo in the occasional mainstream mm -hmm. film, but not like a theater play. And uh, so I auditioned and it, it was four years. I realized four years and 16 years since I came out in a 
in a tangha in a CCP play. So it was such a wonderful experience to come back. It's still uh, running, by the way, till next week. Running. <laughs> if you guys want to watch. Can you pull uh, it up? Maybe we can see. Uh, oh, maybe we can yeah, see. Uh, so the if Virgin Lab Fest. The yeah. Virgin Lab Fest. Fest. Yes. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay, lang. We'll be patient. Uh, <laughs> we'll wait for your. The we'll wait for. Love. Lab. Lab. L A. Is it L A B? Yes. Okay. Then fest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll take a look at this. Uh, There. So that's Virgin Lab Fest 12. I'm just not sure if they like released any video on Virgin Lab Fest 15. Oh, but there, Roddy Vera chats to. There about Virgin Lab All Fest right. 15. So there, that's uh, Roddy Vera, who is a co-founder of a Virgin Lab Fest 15. He's a wonderful director, actor, and playwright, mm -hmm. and he mentors also the the playwrights uh, throughout the process. Yeah. And he they also have like critiquing, wherein um, because of course when you make a new play, it's a, one thing to write it; it's another mm -hmm. thing to, to to bring it to life. And so it really is a collaborative process with the director and the actors also. So the actors bring something new. The director also has a vision for the material. Mm -hmm. And Roddy also helps like critique that process and give uh, constructive feedback so that the material is further developed and polished. Oh, until July 7. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Who's Ro Roddy? Roddy, what? Eh? Roddy Vera, yes. Roddy Vera is He's the, the one on the left, yes, the in, the floral, the left. in the floral uh, shirt. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So for, for our memory keepers and subscribers, yeah. um, is there a possibility that you can be a theater actress mm -hmm. and just do theater without working? Uh, because a lot of people ask us, can you vlog and just quit your day job? This was one <laughs> of the, the discussions yesterday. Yeah. So is it possible if, uh, let's say, all right, let's just say my daughter wants to, uh, uh, comes up to me and tells me, I want to be a theater actress and mm. just a theater actress and nothing else. I don't want to work. I don't want to <laughs> be, I don't want to be in the corporate world. I just want to act. Is that oh. a, a reality? I it, feel like possible? maybe seasonal it would be possible let's say or like if you land like a good uh, a production that, that that would have like a very good budget then that would be possible but that's uh, not very often I'd say seasonal like there are some that I know like okay I'm gonna do a series of big maybe corporate events or a certain project like I know somebody for example she's a computer programmer so yeah. okay I'm gonna do this for like a couple of months so that I have baon and mm -hmm. then I can like act <laughs> I like for, that. Yeah, and, yeah, and just think of theater for like the next few months. Uh, the reality is actually here in the Philippines is that you would need to have something else. Fall and back on. Yes. In fact, I recently watched the play and I was talking to one of the theater stalwarts. I'd mm -hmm. say like one of the pillars in Philippine theater and I was commending his performance because it was so amazing. Yeah. And he also works like as a teacher, as a director and he, do, he has a corporate job as well. And I was telling him, you know, you were so wonderful and that performance just tugged at my heartstrings and I was in tears. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I if this was like the only thing I could do, I would do it. But the reality is, is that you would need to have somebody else. And he's like, because when you do theater, why would you want to do anything else? Yeah. I mean, and I totally got that because, yeah, um, you know, you feel so alive and yeah. exhilarated and... But, there isn't anything like it. But at the end of the day, you still need uh, yeah. you need something to fall back on. Yeah, or and a lot like for example, they do theater work, but they also do TV. Like they come out as regulars uh, in a in a TV show, or they do a lot of commercials. Okay. So you would be finding like a lot of things on the side to be able to complement your okay. work in theater. Is there some form of uh, Sorry for the, 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 the choice of words, but is there some form of discrimination when you do theater and then you start to do TV because TV pays more? Do theater actors and actresses feel like uh, uh, they're dumbing down to mm -hmm. when, when they, they do more of TV? Mm -hmm. is, is there some form like... Um, uh, uh, again, I hate it when I keep doing a sports <laughs> reference. <laughs> Just like uh, if an NBA player came to the PBA, there's there's some form of of feeling that uh, okay, uh, maybe I'm not as good as I used to be, or is is there a, a certain feeling of once you go from theater to mm -hmm. TV just to support the the day to day? Mm -hmm. Is there a certain feeling of 
man, my choice of words are not so good today. There's <laughs> a certain feeling of resentment or maybe a feeling of uh, mm. uh, maybe this isn't for me. But I want to rephrase this whole question already. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very different experience. Mm -hmm. um, of course, doing film and production work and mm -hmm. having the experience of doing film myself, it, it, it really is challenging. Like, a Film acting is very, very different or acting for television yeah. or camera. And I'd say that like both are equally challenging because of course, like for theater, again, there's nothing like it because you are living through that moment from start to finish. Whatever the storyline is, there's a beginning, there's a climax and you let it all out and then there's a resolution at okay. the end. And the audience is with you and they're clapping, they're crying, they're, you know, they're with you in that journey and it's just so electrified and yeah. so exhilarating for film on the other hand it's very it's very tedious in that you know you have to set up your lights you have yeah. to set up your camera everything has to be at a precise angle yes. um, you're looking out for sound so yeah. it really is very very busise and the yeah. time to set up a shot you have to do your test shots and then you know things have to be perfect you know you have to hold the coffee cup in a certain way up to this certain level you're mm -hmm. thinking about of course like yeah. cheating yeah. there's just yeah. so many factors and of course course you're not doing it in order like you yeah. could film um page 18 first and then you go to page two and then you go skip over to page 100 mm. we've done it also wherein we did a film where the ending was Came filmed first. first yeah but then when you edit that all together it has to look like you went through that yes. organic journey okay. so it, it's a different challenge altogether and because setup takes such a long time then you know you could have like a two minute scene but you've been waiting for you five know, hours yeah, yeah before you know so it, they, they actually say um, I I act for free I get paid to wait <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when you're doing a lot of film work but you know it, it's different but it's a job is a job yes and the whatever job it is we're very grateful to have that opportunity yeah. as well um, it requires uh, like when you're doing TV or doing film it requires a lot of patience and you know you really have to get decked out they call those you know those folding chairs yeah artista chairs because right? you know chairs. you should have one so that when you're waiting you know you can yeah. actually lie down you have your books your power bank you yeah. know just so that you can keep yourself occupied because it is a lot of waiting to do uh, like a few minute scene um, but it's a job and you get to tell a story and yeah so so I see the, the difference in, in structure yeah uh, but how about with the the uh, execution or the method is there a difference uh, some say that in theater you have to be exaggerated on mm. TV you have to be very reserved mm. or kailangan mm. matipid sa expression mm -hmm. is, yeah. does that exist? yeah so well for theater then you'd have to do of course you'd have to project your voice yeah. and then of course since it's a bigger space and you have people in the back then the whole concept of stage makeup comes in where you're uh, doing like contour contour and making yeah. your nose line just so that your your features are more pronounced so that it carries and registers um, up to the very end of the theater and then yes you have to make certain you know movements big and yeah basically you're playing for up to the last row and uh, the story needs to reach them your words need to reach them what you're feeling your energy you have to throw it to the very end. So yes, you would be more exaggerated. But for film, then you, you would have like really extreme close-ups. And a lot of it is, you know, registering it on your eyes. Mm. You know, not going like really, really busy, yes. but simplifying, really distilling the emotion and keeping it simple. Now I understand. Uh, Lester, do you watch plays? I mean, uh, can you play? Because uh, that, that uh, I get lucky enough, I'm on the third row and I watch some of the plays and then I wonder when I look at the, the actor or the actress, I say, but it's so big of this voice. It's so big of the audience. But now I get it. As Leslie was saying, once you perform, you have to perform even for the, the person in the last row. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll ask you a question, but I think I already know the answer. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it when this happens. When I'm about to ask a question and then I have the answer in my head, or my I <laughs> end up answering the question in my head. But what's your preference? If you were re if you really had to choose, ah. would it be theater or or? Sabina natin film na lang, wag TV. Okay. Uh, is it? Uh, if, would you act more for for the theater industry or would you like to shift to the film industry? You know, I've been thinking about that and mm -hmm. I've been 
asking myself that. Pwede kasi ako mag-manage eh. Ay, ito ba? Okay, here. Pwede ko, let's use it. Shh.